in less than two hours, liquor will be declared illegal by decree of the distinguished gentlemen of our nation's Congress. To those beautiful, ignorant bastards. Yes. 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 Alcohol prohibition may have been repealed in 1933, but Americans have rarely been more intoxicated with the noble experiment than they are today. Between Last Call, Daniel Okren's best-selling 2010 book, leading clothing designers taking inspiration from jazz age fashions, a new primetime documentary by Ken Burns, and the second season of HBO's critically acclaimed Boardwalk Empire, it's impossible to ignore the new interest in prohibition. Even drinking culture seems to be bellying up to the bar. This is PDT, or Please Don't Tell, which can only be accessed by picking up that telephone. What's fueling this fascination? Reason TV talked to legendary filmmaker Ken Burns, whose Prohibition documentary is now hitting the PBS airwaves. I, I think there's always a superficial interest in Prohibition. You know, you've got gangsters. Everybody wants to be able to kill the people who piss them off. Uh, you've got women who are seemingly promiscuous, the, you know, the flapper dancing with the short skirt and the bobbed hair on top of the tables. But I think in every case, Dan's book, uh, Boardwalk Empire, and our film, it's the understanding that prohibition reveals a lot more. Author Daniel Okren is one of the central voices in the PBS documentary. It so doesn't fit our conception of how we operate as a people, uh, of our sense of the freedom of the individual, uh, that when you are confronted with it, it's kind of inescapable interesting. And many observers are finding analogies between prohibition and today. Culture and art right now are reflective of a general sentiment in this society that the war on drugs has not worked. Aaron Hewson is executive director of the Washington DC based Students for Sensible Drug Policy. If you look at the art and you analyze how the art was portrayed just 20 years ago, 30 years ago, the untouchables, right? The untouchables was black and white. There was no in between. There was no discussion of whether alcohol prohibition sucked or didn't. A show like Boardwalk Empire actually highlights this is not a black and white issue. There's a huge gray area in between. We got a product the fellas gotta have. The parallel between the war on booze as, as uh, represented by prohibition and the war against marijuana uh, and recreational drugs uh, today is that they're failures. Uh, they inevitably will fail. Uh, they create criminal syndicates. Uh, they deprive uh, the government of tax revenue. Uh, they do all sorts of things that serve no one's interest and are very much not in uh, our general social interest. And marijuana and alcohol prohibition may not just function similarly, there's good reason to think they may end the same way. Prohibition ended more than any other reason because the depression came and the federal government was suddenly not collecting nearly as much as it had in income tax and didn't collect anything at all in capital gains taxes for four years. We live now in a culture where tax is very uh, unpopular, uh, where the idea of user tax is quite popular and I think that we will see the legalization of marijuana in certain states uh, come about because of the need to fulfill to fill the state treasuries. One of the most interesting stories I have from being a lobbyist on Capitol Hill, marijuana lobbyist on Capitol Hill, we sit around a table with about 10 lobbyists and a member of Congress. And in general, most of them would go around the table and talk about their tax issues and how they've got a burdensome tax issue in the airline industry and in another industry they'd prefer not to see new taxes. And they would get to me, me being the marijuana lobbyist, and I would say, Congressman, I've got good news here for you. I'm not here to ask you for a tax break. We're the only people who are going to come here and ask to be taxed. Things certainly seem to be heading that way. Last year, almost 47% of Californians voted for a ballot initiative that would have legalized recreational marijuana, and similar tax and regulate propositions will be on the 2012 ballot in states such as Colorado and Washington. Earlier this year, Republican Congressman Ron Paul and Democratic Congressman Barney Frank introduced the first ever bill to repeal federal laws against marijuana, and polls show historically high and still rising levels of support for legalizing and regulating marijuana, similar to the way we do with liquor. Actually, one of the benefits of prohibition, despite this horrible inheritance of organized crime and all the other bad things it did, is that it gives us pause. When somebody comes and said, you know what we need is we need this amendment or we need that amendment, we just kind of go, wait a second, because the memory of prohibition and those unintended consequences are fresh. Until we do finally learn the lessons of prohibition, we'll likely keep debating the equally disastrous outcomes of our failed drug war through art, culture, and the media. For Reason TV, I'm Nick Gillespie.